I have seen two questions frequently coming up in the comments of my previous videos. Why do I tune at A equals 415 hertz? And why, when the tonality of the piece is, for instance, C major, it sounds like I'm playing in B major? Since those questions basically ask the same thing, I would like to address them in this video. And for those of you who are only beginning to explore the harpsichord and its repertory, I will show you a trick that enables harpsichords to play on two different pitch levels. Since my demonstration will be on the harpsichord, I am referring to strings and string instruments. However, the concept is universal in terms of sound properties. Every time you hear a note on a string instrument, the sound is produced because the string is vibrating and the vibration is caused by either plucking the string, like on a harpsichord, or striking the string with a hammer, like on a piano. The frequency at which a string vibrates is expressed using a unit of measurement called hertz, where one hertz equals one vibration per second. The current pitch level standard has basically been in place since about the 1930s and is referred to as standard pitch or concert pitch. According to the standard, the note A above middle C, in other words, this one, vibrates at a frequency of 440 hertz. And this is why we say that A equals 440, sometimes leaving out the term hertz. Incidentally, the reason I'm just pointing to the note and not playing it is because on my harpsichord, this note is not tuned to 440. I should also mention that although 440 is the current standard, that does not mean it is followed universally. The Vienna Philharmonic, for instance, tunes to A equals 445. And indeed, the current standard is nothing more than a convention we have decided upon. This is why I think it is incorrect to refer to musicians who are able to identify the notes they hear as having perfect pitch. What they're really able to do is to identify notes in equal temperament and at A equals 440. This ability can be a wonderful aid, but it can also be a hindrance when dealing with unequal temperaments and different pitch levels. It all depends on how easily a musician can adjust to these alternatives. But there is no such thing as perfect or absolute pitch. 440 is merely a convention we happen to use. There were other attempts at standardization before the 1930s. However, like with many other aspects of music making, the further back in time we go, the more variants and local practices we find. If we were to generalize, we would say that during the Baroque era, the pitch tended to be a little lower than 440, but how much lower it was varied. And in some instances, not only was it perhaps about the same as 440, but it could also be higher than 440. What we now call Baroque pitch is a compromise we have reached in order for performers of historical instruments to have a standard that allows them to play together without having to worry about adjustments. And in that sense, having a standard makes perfect sense. But I should also add that this Baroque pitch is not always universally adopted and that there is also a second standard primarily for French Baroque music. More on that in a bit. The standard Baroque pitch is A equals 415, which is a semitone lower than 440. And this is what I tune both my harpsichord and my spinet to. The practical advantage of the modern standard pitch and Baroque pitch being a semitone apart is that it is easier to find a common ground 
between modern and historical instruments. In this regard, many harpsichords have a trick up their sleeve in that they are equipped with transposing keyboards. Let me show you how this works. As I said, my harpsichord is tuned to 415. And if I were to play, let's say, the note C and a chord C major, it sounds like this. Uh, however, what I can do is remove a piece of wood, this one here, and now I can slide the keyboard to the right. So notice what's going to happen. Here is C major, and now I'm sliding the keyboard to the right, And what happens is that every key is plucking one string higher than before so that everything is transposed up a semitone. In other words, the harpsichord is now at 440. This particular harpsichord is even more flexible because it's capable of double transposition. I mentioned before that there is a second standard primarily for French Baroque music because pitch in France tended to be even lower than one semitone. So the French Baroque standard is set to A equals 392, which is a semitone lower than 415 and therefore a whole step lower than 440. Now let's move the keyboard back to 415. And now we are we're back to 415. So as I use this piece of wood, as I removed it in order to move the keyboard to the right, I can do the same thing with another piece of wood, which I'm removing from the left side. And again, here is our C major in 415. And I move the keyboard. So now what happens is that the strings are plucking one string below and therefore now we are a semitone lower and at 392. As I mentioned before, having all three standards separated by exactly a semitone allows us to move more easily between them. There's only one slight detail that can complicate matters, and that is the use of historical temperaments. If we're thinking in terms of equal temperament, where, as the name suggests, all intervals are equally tempered, moving from one pitch level to another makes no difference because the intervals within every tonality remain the same. So all we have to do is move the keyboard from 415 to 440 or to 392 and there is no need to retune. However, this is not necessarily the case when we use unequal temperaments because the intervals in each tonality are not the same and therefore we get different colors depending on the tonality we're in. And depending on the unequal temperament we use, we may be faced with different challenges. If we use a circulating or well temperament, then the only change we will have to consider is a change in color or character, but every tonality is perfectly playable, so any retuning is not absolutely necessary. However, the temperaments I use most of the time, which reflect the repertory I tend to play, are not circulating, so every tonality is not necessarily playable, or at least some tonalities may sound a bit too spicy. Let me show you how this works out on my two instruments. Q 
Keep in mind that we're dealing with tonalities that are a semitone apart from each other, which means that they are very remote in terms of their key signatures. In our particular case, if I am in C major at 415 and I switch to 440, then if I keep playing in C major, in reality I'm playing a semitone higher in C sharp major, and considering that C major has no accidentals, but in C sharp major all the notes are accidentals, you can tell they basically have no notes in common. The harpsichord is tuned to Rameau, so let's see how the transposition will affect the color. And the piece I will play is a Sarabond from a suite in C major by Dietrich Buxtehude, and for the purpose of this demonstration, I will play it straight through without repeats. First of all, let's move the harpsichord back to 415. And now here is the Sarabande in C major at 415. In other words, I am actually playing in C major. Okay, so now let's move the keyboard to 440. And now I will still be playing in C major, however, in reality what I'm doing now is playing in C sharp major, and notice the change in color. And you can decide whether this is passable or it's a little too much. But C sharp major is a tonality that the remote temperament was not really meant to play in. It's almost doable, but not completely. Now, let's try the same experiment with the same Buxtehude Saraband on the spinet, which is tuned to quarter comma mean tone. As I mentioned before, what happens is that if we move from 415 to 440, we're moving a semitone up, and therefore we're moving from C major to C sharp major. And what happens is that, especially with quarter comma mean tone, as I have mentioned before, the accidentals have only one function. So we don't have any enharmonics whatsoever, and of course, the key signature for C-sharp major has seven sharps. And what happens, in other words, is that all these accidentals are supposed to be sharps. However, in quarter comma mean tone, this is not the case. So this is indeed C-sharp, but then this is E-flat, this is F-sharp, this is G-sharp, and this is B-flat. So you can already tell it's going to be a problem once I transpose to 440. But for the time being, here it is in 415.
now just like I did with the harpsichord, I remove this piece of wood and I slide the keyboard to the right and now I am in 440. So let's see what it sounds like in 440. And I don't know about you, but personally, I would be retuning the instrument. Beyond the historical dimension, is there any reason we should choose lower pitch standards nowadays and not simply use 440? This is a very complex issue that requires the consideration of several factors, especially as, depending on the instrument we are talking about, it can have very different effects on its sound, its timbre, its response, etc. And in terms of singing, it can also make a big difference, not only in terms of the highest and lowest pitches, but also where an entire singing line lies within the range of a singer. So here I am briefly addressing only the overall effect it has on a harpsichord. For an instrument like the harpsichord, whose expressive power relies so much on its resonance, playing a semitone lower means that we end up playing in a range where the character of the instrument is mellower and darker and at the same time more richly resonant. So there is more room for subtle dynamic gradations. And this affects not only the expressive character of the music, but it also affects how I respond to the instrument. So to me, it makes a big enough difference that it's really worth it to explore these lower pitch standards. And this is why I have, as I mentioned before, both of my instruments tuned to 415. Thank you for watching.